everyone. Welcome to Sabrina Sumbri Show. I'm Sabrina Sumbri. This show is, well, you're gonna have to watch this show. It is encouraging, it's inspiring. Well, why don't you just take a look for yourself? Watch this. Phoenix City, Russell County, Lee County, please welcome my guest today, Elder Leela Williams and Sister Liz Mary Wilson. Hi. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hello. Hello. And thank you for being here. Oh, and thank you. We are going to get started because Elder Williams, I want to talk about this powerful testimony you have. Let's start with your childhood growing up. Um, how was your childhood? I had a troubled childhood. How so? I was um, adopted okay. when I was three months old. And I'm told that when I was adopted, I was um, near death. And so my mother uh, was not married at that time. She was dating an individual that I later found out was my father, but he didn't want me at that time. So she ended up giving me away for adoption. We already had uh, one child that had been given away for adoption and was, she was hoping that I would stay in the family. Yes. Actually, I did. She wanted her sister to adopt me, but she couldn't wait. Were there other siblings along with you? Just in the family? Uh, at that particular time, just my older sister and myself. And yourself? Yes. Were you in a, were you, were, let me ask you like this. Was your family church affiliated? Were they Christians? My, um, now I don't know about my natural mother, but who, uh, I was adopted to my mother's first cousin, the male. But the female, he, he died when I was, uh, I think about maybe five years old. And so the adopted mother was affiliated with church. Okay, we're gonna pause right there. And I wanna talk with you, Liz yes. Mary. What about your growing up? What was your experience like? Um, my mother, she raised uh, myself and my sister. She was a nurse and uh, she worked two jobs. Mm -hmm. She left my father when she, when I was about 18 months old, because she said that he was a drunk and beater. My goodness. Yeah. Okay. Back to you, Elder Leela. Um, when were you introduced to Christianity and the church? Well, I was actually introduced to Christianity um, probably as far back as I can remember, maybe about five or six. You know, when, we, when we're introduced, it's not like now mm -hmm. when we were going in. Uh, they talked about Jesus, but I didn't really know Jesus. And so I joined the church. I, my mother, we went to church. I sang in the choir. She sang in the choir. But that was not what happened. Okay. Hold what it right there. Yeah. Hold it right there. Because this is, I love your story. It's interesting. Yes. And I, I want to include you again, Liz yes. and Mary. What about you? When were you first introduced to church and Christianity? Do you remember? Born and raised uh, Catholic. <laughs> okay, okay, that's still church. Yes, Okay. Yes. When I was 33 years old, I just knew there had to be more to it than that. <laughs> okay, hold it right there, because <laughs> both of you have very powerful testimonies. I want to slowly get there. Amen. But he, I do want to ask you, how did you survive your trial an era, you know, childhood, your youthness, you know, that trial and era period of teenagers. How did you survive it? How did you make it through? Um, I was drug induced. Really? Yes. At what age do you remember that? I remember, um, actually, I think I started smoking, cig I started smoking cigarettes um, probably about 10. Who introduced cigarettes to you? My mom smoked them and she asked me to light one and... And that's where it started yes. from. As yes. I've seen it happen. It's happened mm -hmm. in my own family with extended yeah. cousins. So I've seen that happen. That's not yes. unusual for parents to do that with children mm -hmm. at an early age. Mm -hmm. Right. Hold it again. Mm -hmm. What about you, Liz Mary? How did you survive growing up those young, those early days as youth and as a teenager? But God. But God. Okay. Um, when did you, Elder Layla, Leela, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. When did you start living your life on your own terms, playing by your own rules? Maybe when I was around, my adopted mother died when I was 12. Mm -hmm. So around about that time, because I went to live with my natural uh, parents 
and I thought I was escaping, but they start, it, it all started all over again because I was beaten uh, by my adopted mother until she died. And so when I went to live with my natural mother and uh, father, they, it started all over again. Why were they beating you, do you know? Really, I, um, I don't know. Um, why they were do why they were beating me and uh, I'm sure it had something to do with my mother uh, her losing her mother her mother died in childbirth with her and her husband my father beat her hurt people hurting other yes people. yes yes yes, yes. 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 isn't that yes. something yes did you carry on that pain in your own life by hurting others I did not you didn't no uh, surprisingly God did a turnaround in my life um, you know, I said I always say something that Ricky Smiley says. He say, "Ain't no killer, but don't push me." Okay. Now I I'm the one that should have been a murderer, one of those serial killers, because of all the trauma that I had when I was growing up. But God turned it around, and He caused me to love, in spite of. I mean, just amazingly, no matter what anybody does to me or said to me, I loved. Why do you think God kept you? God had a purpose. There's all. Uh, there's always purpose and destiny. And God wanted to. Um, God doesn't. Uh, doesn't cause what happens to us. But if He allows it, that means that we're going to be okay, and He's going to get the glory. And so instead of uh, all, you know, like I would say, why, why? Instead of saying why, why not? Because God used. God is going to use me, and He is using me. Right. Uh, all of the pain and everything that I've gone through, God's using me to set others free, to set the captives free. Amen. Amen. Can you share some of those? I know they're sort of painful stories. Can you share some of those circumstances in which you you were out living and doing your own thing? Well, in uh, out living doing my own thing, I became addicted to crack, okay. and um, I ran a base house while I was doing that. Uh, and for people that don't know what a base house right. is, a base house is uh, a house where you sell drugs, and out of that house. Um, people come in and they use your paraphernalia. They pay you to smoke in your house and to use your paraphernalia. They either give you the drugs or they pay you uh, in cash for it. And the house is armed with armed guards. You have pe men in there with guns, uh, weapons and everything. I have never heard of that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so um, I was just doing my own thing because I was hurting and the drugs uh, drugs is uh, was a symptom. It was not the issue, the root, uh, the root of the root of it was rejection because I had been rejected from the wound and rejected with no love. I chose the drugs to mask the pain. Never liked alcohol. I drank, but never liked alcohol. I, I really liked uh, crack. Mm -hmm. um, was addicted to it. I liked marijuana. I did hash. I did um, speed. Um, have did. It's, Pretty it's, much a it's, lip. Again, your testimony is so powerful. And I know and I pray that someone gets healed and delivered from what you're sharing yes, with us yes, today. Yes, 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 yes. In all that you were doing, were there, how did your friends and family, what did they think of your lifestyle? Well, um, because there was no family, um, they, uh, they really didn't care. What, what I was doing. I had one lady that uh, took me in to live with her and uh, everything was good with living with them. But then we were still doing, I was still doing the same, still doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, and with the, uh, I forgot, uh, not forgot, but I didn't mention the part that I was raped uh, repeatedly and, and uh, you know, molested all doing those beatings and things. I had a cracked spine, had to have like um, eight stitches in my eye so many different things that happened that to me. That you survived. Yes, being homeless. That you survived, and now you sit with us. When did the turning point come for you? In Germany, I was in the I was in the military, and uh, this there's a church uh, was on the base there, and um, they kept bothering me. Then I said they were bothering me. Mm -hmm. They kept bothering me. They kept bothering me, and so. I just said, okay, they're not gonna stop because it was more than one, it was more than two. And they was like, come to church, come to church. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was called House of Prayer number two, uh, Pastor Elder, I mean, Pastor uh, Henry Seymour and his wife, Mary Seymour. And I went and I really don't know what happened. All I know is I was at the front of the church and I was speaking in unknown tongues that's being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And uh, I didn't ask for it. Uh, some people pray for it. Yes. I didn't ask for it, but God knew where I needed it, so he gave me that gift. Yes. And I was, I did that. I stayed, stayed walking with the Lord for a while. But because it was so restraining, um, um, holiness and Pentecostal, nothing's wrong with it, but the people. That's um, right. Yeah, Sometimes that, people get in the yeah. way of. And, and of, they, they, what they were saying, what they were doing, yes. it was so restraining. That wasn't God. And so I was like, ooh, I can't live this. I wasn't ready, and I was like, I can't live this. Because, you know, they were saying, you know, dresses, and you can't have makeup, and you can't do this, that's and you exactly can't do, you is. know, you can't yes, do that. Yes, But yes. that's not God. Mm. That's not God. And so I was like, ooh, I can't, I can't do this. Although I wasn't ready, mm -hmm. that was not God. Okay. And so I backslid. How long did you stay in the wilderness? Because, okay, were you drifting back and forth in the lifestyle that you led before? Initially, I was in it. And then what happened was I transitioned uh, from the uh, military to, uh, I uh, not transitioned, I PCS, meaning that I went from one, one more location with the military to another location sooner than I was supposed to because uh, you need to be strong enough to uh, deal with those that are unsaved, mm -hmm. because either one thing is gonna happen, either one or two things gonna happen, they're gonna draw you or you're gonna draw them. Absolutely. And so because I was not uh, with uh, saved people, mm -hmm. it, to me, nobody wanted to live saved, they just wanted to party. Absolutely. And so I ended up partying, you know, you do it one time and then the enemy says, you know what, it's all right, do it again, do it again. Absolutely. So I found myself back out, back out again. And so I was out there. I, How many years were you going back and forth between being saved and being unsaved? I went back and forth, I want to say maybe five, six years. Five or six years? Yes, before I made a conscious decision. Absolutely. Yeah. And what happened for you? What, what needed to take place for you to commit to being saved? I went to jail. Okay, tell us about it. Yeah, I was incarcerated. I was running this base house, as I told you, uh -huh. and um, I was in the house. That day I had said, I, I said, well, okay, we're not gonna sell any drugs today. We're just gonna sit here and we're gonna smoke. My son, um, he had gone out to get some groceries and he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be. But anyway, they knocked on the door and my guard, one of my guards in there, he said, don't open the door, that's a policeman. And I'm thinking, well, that's my son. You know, I'm gonna open the door, not thinking that I had paraphernalia on the table. We had crack on the table, razor blades, pipes and everything. And so when they, what when I story. opened the door, what a story. he saw what was on the table. And I didn't forgot that I had an armed guard in there. And all I heard him was saying up against the wall, you know, and it was because he saw the weapon. I see. And I had forgotten about that. So but did anyway, you serve time? I did. How long? I did. I was, uh, I served time for six months and would have done three years except for God. Except for God? Yes. What happened during this time when you, between the time you got arrested and when you were released? Well, while I was in, while I was in, uh, in jail, it was a traumatic um, time for me but I had a dream while I was in there. And the dream was I was uh, going through the Bible and God said, I want you to do this. And when I woke up from the dream, I was shaking my head, I was saying no. So what I did was as an escape mechanism not to do what God wanted me to do at that time, I lied. And I thank God for churches that come in there. When they came in, I told the minister, I said, I had a dream. So he said, what was the dream? And I told him, so I said, what did that mean? He said, he looked at me and he says, you know what that mean? I said, no, I don't know what that mean because I didn't want to do that. Okay, what was the dream? The dream was that for me to preach the word. To preach the word? Yes. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. Why did you say no? I don't, I was not ready. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you one of the main reasons that mm -hmm. people say no is they want to keep doing what they're doing. That's Absolutely. Because you know, yeah, right there, that's you know if okay. you change, mm -hmm. You know, if you, you if you change and do what God, you that means you that gotta you're going to have yeah, yes. you got to give everything. it all up. Yeah. Yes, everything. Yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So I, I wasn't ready to do that at that time. Mm -hmm. Who helped you with your change? Who helped you into? Did first of all, did you accept the call on your life? Not at that time, I did. How long did it take you? It wasn't. It was after I got out. After I got out of. Uh, after I got out. 
I had to tell God that I was not going to sell drugs anymore. You had to tell God that? Yes. Because so, uh, what God did was God put some things in place. I never had a record. Mm -hmm. I had a four, five, six page record. My goodness. I don't know who put that there, uh -huh. but mm -hmm. it stopped me from getting out. Mm -hmm. And I did not have a bond. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and, and I had the money to get out, but I couldn't get out because I didn't have a bond. And then I had all these charges, which was not my charges. When I said, Lord, I'm not going to sell drugs anymore, miraculously, everything dropped off of my you. records. Everything dropped? Yes. And I was able to get a real lawyer. Okay. Not a pro bono uh, lawyer, but uh, I mean, not one of the trial ones that the court issued. Uh -huh. I got a uh, public defend. Yeah, they call them public defenders. But I got a real lawyer when I called. And what he did was he was on his own. Uh, handling some of the, you know, cases. And I know that was God that um, got me to him. Absolutely. Everything was dropped. A uh, cousin of mine came up and uh, put my bond up. And uh, I so was So do you released. think this was the change? Do you think this was the turn, the turnaround point for you? It was, it, it was. Uh, the, ba the main turnaround for me was my children. It was, how, how were they affected? Uh, my children were affected because my son, he ended up going into detention. And my, uh, my baby, which was about 18 months old, God bless me that the policeman, he took, uh, he allowed me to let my neighbor come and get my daughter so that someone could pick her up. But my thing was, I have to stop this because I don't want my children to be uh, molested and raped Absolutely. and, you know, end up somewhere just hurting and being abused. Another generational curse. Yes, 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 yes. So I made a conscious decision. You made a decision. I did. And I want to ask you, what changed first? Did you change or did your circumstance change? What changed first? No, um, I changed because I had to change my circumstances. They don't just change on their own. On their own. What happened is when you are uh, on drugs or alcohol or whatever it is you're in, uh, I, I forgot, I was in prostitution too. Okay. Um, okay. You have to change your surroundings. You have to change your friends. Uh, otherwise, you're going to continue to do the same thing. So I moved from Atlanta, Georgia. I left a house full of furniture all of my clothes and I moved to Talberton where I was born at okay. so that I could change my surroundings. Otherwise I'd be dead because if I had stayed there, I would have gone back to prison or I would have been dead from smoking uh, the uh, crack. I wouldn't have not, you know. Thank God you heeded the warning. Yes, yes. Thank God you had an ear to hear from the Lord. Yes. Now this is, this is a question I'd like to ask. How do you go from being unsaved to becoming an elder? <laughs> well, having a made up, having a made up mind, uh, you have to sell out, you have to sell out to Jesus. So many things happened uh, with me in my life. And uh, when God told me um, in 1996, God told me to write my testimony. And you really need to get in a good word based church. You need to get with some people that know how to get you to a place of freedom. That's right. You need to know what your authority is in Christ. You need to know who you are. That's right. Because until you know who you are, you're going to keep doing the same thing because the enemy has stolen your identity. Right. And he wants you to think that nobody loves you. That's right. He wants to think that you don't have any worth. He wants to yes. tell you that because you got raped, you know, you got raped or you got molested that you're, you know, you're no good. Or if you've already have, you already have children, what he says is that nobody wants you. Nobody's right. going to, uh, go with somebody, you know, marry somebody that has does. children. Yeah. That's right. And you have to start where you are. That's right. And oftentimes people are not transparent. We see people with the houses. We see them with the cars. Speak. We see them with the good jobs. But the thing is, is can you tell me how you got there? 
Come on. Speak. And that's what that's what God has called me to is to break down those barriers. I'm going out for the person that was raped, the person that was molested. I'm going out for the drug addict. I'm going out for that prostitute because I want you to know that God loves you. That's right. I want you to know that there's nothing that you could do that's so bad that God would not own you back. He's married to the backslider that's right. because we have a lot of people that's been in church right. and they've been hurt by people in church because yes. uh, people in Talk church, they are so religious. We we don't want religion. We want an organism, a living organism. On, we want it. people that love you because deliverance is a love ministry. And that's what I want to do with my ministry. I want to train people. I want to train them. And I'm sure you will, but I want I want to just intervene just for one moment because yes. there is a special event being held in your honor. Can you tell the, the viewing audience about that so that they can hear more from you and people like you? Yes, yes. Uh, on the 19th and the 20th of May, which is this weekend, Still Standing Healing and Deliverance Ministry will be launching. And that means that we'll be beginning that ministry. God told me to start ministry. He didn't tell me to get a building. And so with this ministry, what I'll do is I'll be teaching. But during this weekend, what we're going to do is we're going to have a wonderful time yes. in the Lord. Yes. We're going to have a comedian. We're going to have dance. We're going to have testimonies so that you'll see that you're not alone. That's right. No matter what it is that you've done. No matter what. Come hell or high water, sink or swim, That's God's right. still going to be there for you. That's right. And he is there for you. He loves you. But I want you to listen at some people that have gone through some things and you'll look at your situation and you'll say, "Ooh." Okay, it's not that bad. That's right. I think I know that if she can make it or he can make it, if God can bring them out, he'll bring me out too. And that's what I want to do with this. And we're just going to have fun on that Saturday. Um, God told me to bring food. So we're going to bring some food but, um, there. Um, and God's just been so awesome because yes, he, is. he has uh, caused people to just give. Amen. To Amen. give. When God does something, that's what he does. And that's if right. they want to make a contribution, if they have time to do that, how do they get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me. My phone number is 706-617-1084. And we will make sure that you get a receipt for whatever it is that you give. Yes. And if you want to donate something, we're giving door prizes because I want people to be loved. Yes. We're giving door prizes. So if you want to um, donate a door prize, let me know. Just give me a call, 706-617-1084. Yes. Powerful testimony. I want to hear from you, Liz Mary, but we'll do that at another time. But I do want to know, how did your path cross with Elder Leela? Uh, I met her in church. <laughs> in church? What yes. a great meeting. Yes, yes. I meet a lot of people in church, yes. <laughs> what a great meeting. Yes, yes. Spirit knows spirit. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So yes. was a friendship formed after meeting? No, we just kept meeting at different kept places. Meeting. Yes, yes. Now, how has the Lord changed your life? Yes. Uh, I, too, was in the military. My uh, story is not as colorful as Leela's, Lord Jesus. Um... Looking for love in all the wrong places, like she said. As, as so many stories, that's, that's a part of my testimony, so I understand that. So yes. I fell into sin, you know. Uh, would have stayed there, but God wouldn't let me go. You know. Well, my sister didn't say is that God, he, uh, no matter what you're doing in your life, he never lets you go. He made you. He loves you. So he just, you know, kept pursuing me. And I just finally gave in. When you feel unloved, you'll do things to, like she said earlier, hide your pain, but it doesn't. It doesn't stop the pain, because when you come down, you're still feeling hurt, you're still feeling scared, still feeling lost, still feeling alone. When you turn to God, He loves you. He'll never leave you. He's the one person that'll never leave you. Man will let you down every time, every time. So, like my sister said, you know, God loves you and we want to just let you know that God loves you. People say they love you, but love is not a, just a word. Love is action. There's many ways to show love. Yes, what you do. You know? So if you will come, you'll be blessed. Come to the ministry on uh, the 19th and the 20th, you'll be blessed. And it's not about church. It's about relationship. God's calling you back to him, not to us. 
to him. All you have to do is just turn. We call, we call it repent. And it's not a, you don't have to say anything to us, just talk to God. You don't need a, a church to do it. Just tell God you're sorry for what you're doing, you want to come out of it. Ask for forgiveness for yourself, for whoever hurts you. Forgive God and just turn. And like my sister said, you got to come out of whatever you're in. Come out that sin, come out that neighborhood, come out that city. Because you can't change in the same mess. Well said, well said. For someone who may be watching the show, um, pretty powerful testimonies, and I thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank Could you so much. Could you, Elder Leela, pray for someone who is probably stuck in some cir circumstances or condition and don't, can't seem to find a way, way out of it? Can you offer a prayer to the, the viewing? I will. First audience. of all, let me say that um, there is no sin greater than any other sin That's except right. for you don't believe that Jesus is a rewarder of those that didn't really seek after him. That's right. So there's nothing that you can do that God won't forgive you for. And God is calling. Uh, God loves you. Yes. And I just want to just I, I, what I want to do is, is I just want to lift you up to him. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. For those that might be watching, those that don't think that they measure up. I thank you, God, that they don't have to measure up to anybody except for you. Yes, Lord. That you accept them just like they are. Just like they are. I thank you, Father God, that we release love to them right now, right now in Lord. the name of Jesus. Yes. We ask that you will open their eyes, yes, God. Lord. Open their ears, Touch Father God. Touch their heart that yes, they might Lord. be able to receive you. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, I'm asking you that you will place somebody in their path. Yes, Lord. That they would be able to see you, Father God. Yes, Lord. God, they need to see a testimony. Yes, Lord. They need to hear hear some real people, Father God. So we plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. Right now we Lord. come against the assignment of the enemy yes, concerning Lord. them, Father God. We curse it at the root. At we the call roots. it null and void. Yes, Lord. And we decree and declare that under the sound of my voice, you have to come forth. Yes. You have to come, come forth. forth now you in the have name to of come Jesus. forth in the name of Jesus, no matter where you are. Yes. If you're looking at this, I thank you that you receive God's love yes. and God's not going to leave you alone yes. because he loves you. He loves you. I thank God that your peace is in him. Yes. And we release peace to you today. We release love to yes, you today. Yes, right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you, Father. For your word. Yes, Lord, thank you. The blood of Jesus covers you. Yes, Lord, thank you. We thank you for the whole arm of God, Father God, that you would close them today, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for healing them, Father God. Yes, Lord, not thank just you physically but mentally father god because some of us most of it is locked up we're locked up in our minds yes we need yes, to be healed and it. delivered in our minds yes. first so we just decree and declare that you have the mind of christ yes and you'll get up today and you'll remember today and you'll go forth and you'll search him yes you'll yes. search him yes today i decree and declare that you won't have peace that yes. he'll always touch you. Yes. And you, 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 you are awakened today. Your desire is awakened yes, today. Yes, right now. And that you want to find out who this man is. Yes, yes. Who is it? Yes. That loves me like this unconditionally. Yes, yes Lord. Thank and you. Father, we bless you. Bless we give you name. glory. Hallelujah. We give you honor. Thank you, Father. And we just magnify you. Thank in Lord. Jesus' name, we pray. I'd Thank like to just um, just shout out to the people that have uh, contributed okay. to uh, to the ministry okay. for uh, Columbus Research and uh, Wellness Institute, you, uh, Unique Castle, uh, Royce uh, Matthews, Carla Riddick, Lise Mary Wilson, uh, Diane, Deborah Hoskins, and for those people that are doing an awesome job on supplying the food, yes, they're they gonna do. feed over 125 people yes. uh, for me, and they're doing it for me uh, just out of an act of love, Amen. and that costs a lot of money. Yes. And their name is Art on a Plate. Amen, Thank amen. You. Yes. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. I wanna thank my guests here, and they're certainly welcome to come back. Thank you, Liz Mary. Thank you, Elder Leela, oh, for being you. here. Thank you, my God. Um, God bless this you. This has been a powerful session. And I know someone 
has heard it, and some will be set free because of what they heard here today. Yes, in the I name of Jesus. I thank you, viewing audience, yes. for watching. I want to thank the innovator and creator of this great show. Yes. And as I always say, I pray you have sweet, sweet dreams, mm -hmm. a big life, and peace of mind. Yes. See you next time.